there goes that book. <gasps> you must burn control. No kidding. Hey guys, welcome back. Today is Saturday, May 13th, and today I would like to show you my Star Wars collection. Now, there's a disclaimer, this is not exactly all of it. I'm leaving out clothing, costumes, and all my Lego sets. But other than that, yes, I'm going to show you as much as I possibly can of my Star Wars collection. I used to have more, but I got, I've got i been weeding out things. I had to sell a few things a few years back in order to get dog food. So, yeah, most you guys have seen probably seen most of this in different videos, but here we go. I'm not even sure where to start. Well, I'm going to start with my favorite part of the collection, which is the media, the movies. Um, I have, on DVD, I've got episodes 1 through 3, plus a, a bonus disc, disc that came with 2 and 3. The first season of Clone Wars, uh, Rogue One, and The Force Awakens. Probably one of the only people left in the world that still has a, v, a working VHS player. This one is really fun. This is the original, uh, I think it's 1978 or 1979 VHS tape release of Star Wars. It was just called Star Wars back then. There was no New Hope. It was just Star Wars, which is pretty cool. And it's got a really ancient Fox logo. There's no trailers or anything beforehand. It's just the Fox logo and then the fanfare and then the opening crawl, which is it's pretty cool. So, <laughs> yeah, this is the original VHS tape release of New Hope. Of course, this is uh, from Star Wars to Jedi, the making of a saga. This one and my VHS tape versions of the whole trilogy, which is the 1995 release. I know they're out of order. I got at a thrift store for like 10 bucks, so I'm like, I see Star Wars stuff there, and if I have money, um, there's no stopping me. <laughs> so those are the tapes. This is a cassette tape version of the Return of the Jedi radio drama. I've got the radio dramas of The Empire Strikes Back and Star Wars, uh, New Hope, on as digital copies on my computer, and the same with episodes... 4, 5, and 6. Those are digital copies on my computer. I do not have DVDs of those. Uh, first of all, this side of the books and magazines. Uh, this one, Lego Star Wars Force Awakens. This was handed out at the premiere of Force Awakens at a Cinemark theater. And I'm not a kid, but hey, it's I love Legos and I love Star Wars, so I had to grab this. This was really cool. Plus it was free, so there's you know there's no arguing with that. This is an episode one comic book. A friend gave this to me quite a few years after episode one came out. And I know episode one has got its critics, but I like it. And this it's just fun. I love the illustrations and the color scheme. It's really neat. I, I really like it. I've got a few issues of Star Wars Insider. I have two that were from... Uh, the anticipation leading up to the release of episode 3, so these magazines are pretty old. They're, yeah, look at all that stuff. <laughs> um, what was this? 2000, was this May 2000? No, it can't be May 2005. Uh, February, oh, January 2005. So yeah, this was before, I think before the full a theatrical trailer came out for episode 3. Let's see, this one's from May 2005. This is the last one to come out before episode 3. And this one, this is the most recent one I've got. I had to get this one because it had Han and Chewie on the cover with the We're Home. And this was the countdown for Force Awakens. What was this? Uh, July 2015. This has got some neat stuff in it, you know. Of course, like any magazine, it's half ads, but it, yeah, it's got some neat stuff in it. This was a book that was given out at Celebration 4 back in 2007. Yeah, May 24th to, through the 28th. It's one of the few pieces of Celebration 4 swag I've got left. So I'm holding on to this for all I'm worth. It brings back a lot of memories of what happened and everything I did. It's pretty cool. 
what's this one? Oh, this is a sticker book. <laughs> like I said, uh, I don't care if something is for kids. If it's Star Wars, I'll grab it anyway. So, yeah, some of the stickers I did not put in there and just put on my stuff. So Everybody's already seen this. This is part of what I got for Christmas, a uh, coloring book. I've only done the first couple pages. So. And the Ultimate Sticker Collection for Episodes 1 through 6. Somebody gave this to me. And I used leftover stickers for Christmas and birthday cards for, like, years. Now for the other books, like I said, I used to have a lot more than this. I used to read the Young Jedi Knights books, and I had a couple of Omnibus comic books, but since those are no longer canon, and I have no attachment to the characters anymore, I decided to let them go. So this is what I've got left. Um, paperback of the Star Wars trilogy. Paperback of the lead-up to Rebels, A New Dawn. I really like this. It gives a lot of good insight into Kanan Jarrus and how he met Harrison Dula. This one, I'm pretty happy I found this. This is the original 1976, I think? Yeah. Yeah, original. If you can see this or not. The original 1976 hardcover of... The of um, Star Wars. Where is this? Yeah, the original 1976 hardcover edition of Star Wars from the Adventures of Luke Skywalker by George Lucas. And I'm pretty happy I found this. Of course, if it still had the dust jacket, it would probably be worth more. But I'm not interested in what it's worth. This is pretty cool because it's got it's got these color pictures from the movie, and this is before even the movie came out. So, this, this is pretty cool. I feel like this is almost like a piece of Star Wars history. I've got the Jedi Path, and this is cool. I really love this. It's literally like a Jedi handbook, and you know how there's notes in the margins? I added my own notes in my Jedi Alter Ego. Even though this is a technically no longer canon, I can't let go of this. It's too cool. I love it. This is also no longer canon, but I don't care. I love it. I've been waiting for something like this for years, basically telling a tale of what Obi-Wan was doing while he was looking after Luke on Tatooine. And then this one, the Revenge of the Sith novelization. I actually have not read this in ages, but I got this, I think it was the day it came out, because I actually had money back then. This one's a Black Series U-Wing that I got for Rogue Friday last year. It's kind of a neat little model, I like it. Um, even though Luke's my favorite character, sadly, I only have two pieces of Luke merchandise, which is my Black Series Bespin Luke. I really, really like the super articulated figures. This is cool. I'm not a, an action figure person, but these things, I love them. I really, really like these things. And of course, Bespin Luke's one of my favorite um, outfits that Luke wore. Unfortunately, I lost the blade for the lightsaber because I'm not the kind of person that keeps things in boxes so they will be in mint condition. If I get a toy, I'm going to play with it, whether I'm grown up or not. So that was my fault. I don't have the blade anymore. But oh well, at least he's still got the lightsaber. And this one is my bobblehead old Luke. I love this. It's so cute. Everybody knows about my little three and a half inch uh, Ray action figure. This was kind of helpful for costume reference, but not really. It's a decent sculpt, not the best, but I had to get something for Ray, and I was practically broke, and this is the only thing I could afford, so. I've got a little bit of dark side merchandise, but I try to stay on the light side with all the stuff I've got. This was in the, um, the box of things that I got for Christmas. Uh, it's a Kylo Ren eraser, I guess that's what it's supposed to be. Or a pencil topper, whatever you want to use it for. I don't think anybody uses pencil toppers anymore, it's just something kind of cute. It's all rubber. This Darth Vader helmet, this was originally, um, it held candy, and I don't know why I held onto this, but it's a, it looks pretty nice, and anytime I draw Darth Vader in peanut style, this is really good helmet reference. I can look at it from different angles, so I know how to draw his Darth Vader. This one was a Christmas present from my brother. It's um, a it's a puzzle. The image is on the bottom. Let's see if you can see this. Luke reflected invader. Uh, yeah, Luke reflect, reflected invaders 
eyes right after Vader gave them the revelation of he is the father. And since it's got Luke on it, I'll keep it. Obviously, as you can see, Yoda's one of my favorite characters. Everyone has met legendary Master Yoda. He's been in a lot of my videos. I really, this is like the coolest toy I've ever had. The only thing that comes close was an R2-D2 that I used to have that sadly had to sell. And everyone's met. This little guy. He says two other things. And this. But I usually take him on hikes and things like that. He's just a way to take a little Star Wars thing along with me. But he was with me during my last semester at college, and it was just fun to carry around. This is a Clone Wars version, but I had to get it because it's a Yoda yo-yo. I'm not very good at yo-yoing, especially in front of a camera, but let's see how it works. Ah! And I totally messed up. Oh well. <laughs> this isn't technically a toy, but I've had it for quite a few years. They were actually selling these in a college bookstore, and of course, I love Yoda, so I had to get him. It's one of those little Lego keychains. Sadly, part of his ear broke off, but that's because they actually use my stuff and don't just display them. This one, again, it's not technically a toy, but I really, really like it. It's one of those gentle giant, what they call bust-ups. It's a little scale version of Yoda. He's been on a few of my birthday cakes, so I really like having him around. And he's just the perfect scale for my um, Black Series Luke to kneel in front of. So I kind of like that. Of course, every Star Wars fan has to have at least one Pez dispenser. This is Yoda. Obviously, the candy's been gone for quite a few years. And that's my only other Pez dispenser. It's R2-D2. I had one with C-3PO, but C-3PO's kind of whiny. So i am decided, no, if I'm going to collect things, I'm going to focus on one area or the other. Even though you see a really hodgepodge here. Okay. This was something I got in the... Uh, Christmas box. It's a mint in box Trade Federation micro machines. NTT, I think. Yeah. Two um, Naboo Starfighters. I, I, the, the design was kind of cool. And like I said, even though episode one has its critics, these are kind of cute, so I'm definitely keeping them. Plus, they were a gift from a friend, so yeah. George Lucas has got a Chewbacca mug, and so I decided I had to have a Chewbacca mug. I traded someone for this at a Star Wars Christmas party, and he's been holding my pens and pencils ever since, which is probably 10 years now, so it's pretty cool. This Yoda Cups, he's got a hollow head. I need to clean it out. He's also held my um, stationery. Honestly, here he looks a little bit more, I don't know, Vulcan? But it's still recognizable as Yoda. So, unfortunately, again, he's gotten a little chipped from all the moves I've gone through. But it's one of my favorite cups. This came with something when I won a contest. Oh, man, and it's really messy. I need to clean it up. Um, it's a little tiny miniature lightsaber. I don't know. <laughs> it's supposed to be Qui-Gon's. It was attached to a teddy bear, and I don't know where it came from. So... Okay, going along with House. Remember um, the different cereals that came with the Saber Spoons? This was one of them. I wanted badly to get a purple one, but after getting three different boxes of cereal and having all red lightsabers, I was kind of let down. But it, obviously it doesn't light up anymore. I don't even know why I'm keeping the spoon part. Maybe it's just because I'm a nerd. I actually went and got a Star Wars beach towel a while ago. Which is ironic, because I have not been swimming for a couple of years, but... Hey, you know what? This looks cool. It was either this or Rebels, and I wasn't interested in Rebels yet, so... Yes, it's got Vader, Chewie, R2, 3PO, whoa! Yoda and a Stormtrooper. I have not used it yet, but I'm looking forward to doing that sometime, so that's my Star Wars beach towel. Everyone's already seen this. Let me try and fly it later, because we've got quite a bit of wind today. It's the X-Wing kite. It's a lot of fun. Hmm. I guess this would also qualify as a toy. Everyone's seen the inflatable lightsaber I got <laughs> at the library. This one's probably my favorite lightsaber prop. It's Mace Windu Force Effects. I got this at Costco years and years ago. Yeah, 2005. Oh my goodness. 
the old master replicas back when they were really, really good things instead of cheap old plastic things. <laughs> it does light up and it does have sound effects, but there's no batteries in it right now. Otherwise, I would show it to you. And plus, it's best if you turn off the lights and ignite it. Then it looks really, really cool. But yeah, I've taken this to a lot of trooping events. I used this as a flashlight a couple times, so I really, really like this lightsaber. It's got a good weight to it, too. It's Mace Windows. The other lightsaber I've got is sort of modeled after Obi-Wan's. I think it's from Park Sabers. Um, it used to light up, but it doesn't anymore. I think the wiring went kaput. But this makes a really great prop to hang from my belt, and it does also have a blade that's detachable or attachable or something like that. So, whoops, hello. Don't want to break a window here. So, yes, this is my favorite lightsaber prop so far. I love this thing. I got good weight to it, too. It's about a pound or something. You guys saw the stuff I got in the little care package, the BB-8 notebook and the pencils, the Yoda colored pencils from, what was it, episode three? <laughs> and the Force Awakens pencils. None of them have been used. I'm going to keep these in the package as long as I can. This is a challenge coin I got from the fan club I'm a member of, the Jedi Assembly. Let's see if I can pull it out of here. Ha ha, yeah, it's stuck. Bringing balance to the Force. Oh wow, I got that back in 2011. And the Jedi Assembly, that's their logo. That's the club I've been a member of for the longest, and they're really, really cool. I love them like family. And this I actually found on the street somewhere and brought home and cleaned it up. I guess that really does make me a scavenger like Ray, but it's a Princess Leia coin. On the back is Star Wars, 2005. I think I remember when these came out. But, yeah, I scavenged that. <laughs> this is also my R2-D2 pen. Obviously, it hasn't worked for quite a while, but it's Lego and it's R2-D2, and I love both. So, there you go. My Queen Amidala Christmas ornament. I've got a Yoda Christmas ornament, but I can't find it right now. Celebration 4 stuff, what little of it I have left. There's a whole bunch that I lost. I've still got my... The only piece of exclusive merchandise I actually bought was an R2-D2 magnet. So, it was kind of cute. That was the style of drawing that he used for the badges. This was actually my badge. I don't think I'm ever letting this go. Uh, adult four-day pass. I carried that everywhere. I miss conventions. And there's the little bit of Star Wars jewelry I have. You may have seen it in a few of my videos. Uh, both of them I got at Hot Topic. This is a May the Force Be With You with a little thing of the original New Hope uh, poster. It's really blurry in here. Rebel logo. I wear this more often. And it's part of my keychain. This was actually given out. It reminds me of the New Republic symbol from the old thing, so like, oh, gotta have this, and it's pretty durable, so, yeah. The only ones I have left are this one, May the Force Be With You, I got that back in 2004. This one, also got that at Hot Topic. And that one, I've also had since 2004, I got it at the same time as my May the Force Be With You pin. Was one of the, something one of the theaters was doing for a charity. Don't remember what it was for, but it was for the re-release 3D for the 3D re-release of Phantom Menace. Whew. This may not seem like much. It's just a piece of deteriorated uh, foam rubber from 1982. But you know what this is? Do you know what this is? This came from Buttercup Valley. The 501st took a trip there in 2009. I did not go, but one of my friends did and was handing these out. That is a piece of the Sarlacc Pit. The Sarlacc Pit that was um, blown up. And, like I said, it does not look like much, but it was a piece of ancient... It's like a couch cushion or something. That was buried out in the desert. And sometimes people go out there to go digging for buried treasure, as it were. And whatever they find, they keep. Most of the good pieces are already gone, but occasionally you can find a piece like this. So, yeah, this is an actual... <laughs> this is the closest I will ever get to visiting a Star Wars set or having a piece of a Star Wars set. I've got a piece of the Sarlacc. <clears throat> okay, guys, there you have it.
have it. That is my entire Star Wars collection, with the exception of clothing, uh, things that I have made, including costumes and artwork, and Legos. I didn't do the Legos because some of them have missing pieces. Some of them my dog got a hold of when she was a puppy and chewed up, so they don't look as good as they used to. And only one of them is completely assembled, and that's the X-Wing up there. There's only one other X-Wing I will show you. Uh, that's this one. It's my snap-tight model kit of Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. There it is, hanging from my ceiling, and I need to take it down because I'm going to be painting the bedroom soon. And there, of course, is the Lego X-Wing. I don't even want to know how dusty it is now. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any suggestions or comments or anything like that, go ahead and post a comment below. Day 13 of Princess Buns. I confess I completely missed it yesterday. But again, more videos coming very soon. So until next time, this is the Clumsy Jedi signing off. Bye, guys.